I have a very important announcement, Shane. Ooh, well, don't keep the audience uh, a quiver in anticipation for much longer. We've been listening to feedback, and I got a notice from Legal. Oh, I thought that was just that, uh, you know, our audio interfaces were continuing to have issues. That's where that, I thought that was coming from. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Uh, no, no, that noise, no, that is legal, um, you know, <sighs> sending me messages. Um, they've officially announced that we are officially come free on the podcast. Oh, really? So, in case you're wondering. Come free Dursley. Yes, that's... So we, are, uh, we are done with that lane. It's, it's to bed now. Uh... In fact, we did it so much last week that I just need to go to sleep. I'm tired. <laughs> oh, you got it out of your system, did you? Yeah, I'm like Michael, except it's an annual thing. I just one big shot uh, for the, the whole season, the whole year. Okay. Well, then I guess that means that we're going to have to just uh, inaugurate a, a brand new intro to the show. And I'm just going to have to change my entire bit here <laughs> since... We've been wholly fixated on this whole idea of our bodily fluids well, no, being no, legal, important. Legal said that we can keep... No, the... I, because Legal just told me that I need to change how I'm approaching our intro, so... <laughs> well, then I bet you better listen to Legal. Yes, indeed. So, uh, on that note, and from that vein... <laughs> As it were, I'm not making any allusions to ejaculate, <laughs> mind you. I'm just mentioning that there's an appendage it typically flows out of. But uh, in regards to that, I will say not Heil Cumslingers, because I would never say that. No, Legal would no, certainly never no. cajole me out of it. But uh, uh, I will say instead something, you know, off the cuff. Just on the sperm of the moment, if you will, I might come up with something. By it sweet be... quaff of Michael. Indeed. How about, you know, ladies and germaphobes, boils and ghouls, gremlins of all ages, welcome to this, the Disinformed Podcast. I'm Shane. I'm John. And I'm Michael. See, look at that. We pivoted. We got ourselves out of the gutter and into the gremlins. Yeah. Mm, gremlins. And I like that. In these trying times where so many <laughs> of us are dealing with... With, you know, national travesties, and in this economy, no less, uh, I'm just not going to continue to subject people to, you know, sexual euphemisms, appropriate or otherwise. And, you know, uh, I, let's talk about the plague instead. It's like my granddaddy always used to say, Steve Jobs didn't die for this. Indeed. And your grandfather died in, like, 1927, so yep. he was a precognitive. Yep, for sure. Yes. I don't think you can say that anymore. <laughs> I mean, I didn't say anything about pre-something else. I would not dare <laughs> make any sort of an illusion. Because, again, we're getting off the ejaculate train. <laughs> never again. I swear this never happens. <laughs> Michael's going, how much cutting am I going to have to do tonight? Can I start with myself? <laughs> I already have all Anywho. these puns. So, Shane, yeah. <laughs> let's try this again from one, shall we? I'll try to contain myself. I've already finished several times. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, hard, hard reboot. Here we go. I'm going to hold the apple for five seconds, and then the system's going to reset. So, ladies and germaphobes, boils and ghouls, gremlins of all ages, welcome to this, another stirring installment of the Disinformed Podcast. I'm Shane. I'm John. I'm Michael. <laughs> and legal has said that they officially condone that intro. I am getting slips of paper shoved violently beneath my door. It sounds like my cats are trying to get into the room again, but no, apparently it's just legal sending me the newest updates and communiques. <laughs> you can hear you can hear it on Craig's lips as he screams as they scuttle and take him away from the neighborhood. Indeed, indeed. And also, on that note, since we're in a Night Valian sort of mood, to the family of former podcaster Courtney, our sincerest condolences on your loss. She was a good kid. She didn't deserve this. She had a good life. We, she did. We tried saying stop the damn match, but... We did, we did. And then she was thrown from the top of the food pyramid. It was absolutely horrific, and I will personally never recover. Mm-hmm. She had a family. Does that mean Jonah's on the market? Possibly. Of course, that's but, where John's uh, mind goes to immediately. It's like, wait, that means he's single. 
Huh. I can and get on that sweet, sweet grief sex. <laughs> and we're back being off topic again. Man, we're really right. just Rail listening to Dewan. It's yeah. a beautiful thing. Dewan, but, I uh, love you, for... but your, 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 your advice has backfired. They're leaving in, in just in mass numbers. Yes, yes. And we weren't that popular to begin with. So thank you for your sabotage, you sweet shit. But uh, in any event, for those of you who are blissfully ignorant to why we're making so many bizarre illusions this week, apparently you weren't here for last week and you might not be here for next week. But what we typically do on this show, other than making uh, irreverent references to bodily fluids, is uh, we delve into random esoteric topics and in the course of explaining them, to one another, and you, the lovely listeners. We will lie about them, because that is our shtick. But we do not l allow you to leave disinformed. Oh, no, 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 no. You shall not be led quietly into the night by the hand and thrown down a, a hole to just die in my hole. But my hole. Uh, we're, we're going to give you a little denouement at the end of the show. We'll explain what we lied about and why it's important to you. Michael, Shane finally showed me the My Holes video. <laughs> my holes it's uh <laughs> it was worthy worth of an after dark is it not <laughs> it was worth the wait it was it was worth the wait was that a fat joke i'm sure nia Jax is gonna be very upset at you for saying that <laughs> <laughs> i'm pretty sure that her pussy could bench lift me <laughs> whoa uh she's on the record as having injured more <laughs> of her fellow wrestlers than anyone else in history she's nearly crippled people routinely just I, she doesn't know how to move around i stand by my statement <laughs> you should so in any event michael what are we chatting about this week other than nia jackson her whole she well, just <laughs> Curled. <laughs> my God, oh my well, she is the Rock's cousin, by the way. So, oh, she's built like a brick shit house. <laughs> she is. This uh, is a very strong woman. It is known. Anyway, um, I'm sorry. today, let's go back in time to the ancient days of television, long Ooh. before streaming services, satellite TV. Uh, when everything and broadcast on the old CRT TV came from local television stations. Indeed, and you couldn't reference any sort of bodily fluids there either. Oh yeah, the FCC would just stamp that down faster than legal could. Like a, a new ACDC album back in black and white, I think, is what Would you uh, what say that at. maybe this might be like Springsteen, Madonna, way before Nirvana? Like there is U2 and Blondie and music still on MTV? Possibly, yeah, yeah. but maybe... we are in fact the new Americana, <laughs> well, high on legal marijuana. Because she's still preoccupied with nineteen, nineteen, nineteen eighty five. Okay, ooh, just ooh, shut ooh. up already. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back in time, Michael. Okay, it's late. Doodly do. It's uh, I I couldn't <laughs> think of any. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> oh my God, it's like you're right here in the room with me. Whoa. It's late at night, and you're just flipping through channels looking for something to watch. You eventually find a movie and settle in. What movie? Planet Halloween. Of the Apes. Of yeah, Mercy. Planet of the yeah. Sure, sure. You know what? Mad, uh, mad science. There we go. Don't, mad science? Don't try yeah. to get mad at me that, that you're be, not setting a scene. Or it, bad science. Is it bad science? We, it's weird science, oh, but uh, damn third it. time's the charm. Ah, okay. First time's the harm. Weird science. There we go. Indeed. All right. Weird science. Uh, you settle in for a good watch and you fall asleep. I wouldn't fall asleep <laughs> during I mean, weird science. Yeah, that's fair. Don't I wrote that without writing asleep. down the an actual movie, but John put me on the spot. So um, right, maybe next time you'll learn. You wake up with a start. You must have fallen asleep while watching the <laughs> movie. Exactly. As you come to, you notice that the broadcast day ha must have ended, and all that's on the screen is static, picking up random signals from any and everywhere. You stare at the static, and a feeling of dread starts to grip you. What is in that static? Is it purely random, or is there something in there you can't see? They're I always thought it was just a bunch of. I always thought it was just a bunch of ants racing. <laughs> Someone watched Hellraiser too many times. I was say ants <laughs> marching? No, Ooh. racing. She wakes up in the morning. <laughs> do, do, do. Um, I like that singing is just going to become my new shtick on the show. I'm just going to oh, randomly burst into song like it's a musical. Outside of the, the legal requirement that's been in, enforced of last week, there was a lot of singing last week. And I almost mm -hmm. feel like that might, I, I don't know. 
I haven't gotten a, a note under the door yet. My okay. cat is mewing at me. Well, but we can only legal's can, not here. We can only behave as we're told to behave. So, well, as Michael was setting a scene, he goes to sleep, wakes up watching a movie. Do do do. And the static's feeling small. Do do do. Um, so that static and it's an accompanying white noise is creeping you out a bit. Uh, so you change the channel to something that hopefully isn't static. Uh, the next channel is airing town information on loop, like when the next town hall meeting is and what's on the docket for said meeting. When a loud screeching tone startle, startles you, waking you up completely. Uh, exactly. Uh, it's an emergency alert system announcement warning about a weather warning in your area. You watch as the county weather service um, issues a warning for a meteorological event that is currently happening and will continue until sunrise. A further warning advises you not to observe this event with the naked eye before ending the alert and returning back to the normal broadcast. A bit confused, you keep your eyes glued to the channel as it lists what is up next. Uh, it lists a program to start at 2.15 and is in the process of typing out what the program is before another emergency alert system takes over the broadcast, this time listing a civil danger alert, giving more information in regards to the meteorological event. It adds that, in addition to not observing the event, to remain indoors and to not look at the night sky. I'm going to tell you one thing. The government's not going to control what I do. So Fair if they're enough. telling me that I can't go outside because I could get hit by stars, I'm still going to go outside because that's my God-given right. Do. It's I my mean, freedom legal, to get crushed. <laughs> legal can control your actions, though. Well, legal isn't the government, so that that that's a different tier. We got the government below and then legal above. And thank Quab for that. Mm -hmm. It does go and all the how? way to the top. Uh, let's see here. Uh, however, before you even have a chance to process this new information, the text is replaced stating that the event is in fact safe for all to view and that the warning has been lifted. It even goes so far as to demand that you go outside right this instant. This so what M. Night Shyamalama Ding Dong are you trying to hurl at us here, friend? I'm oh, almost done. I'm almost Shane, done. Shane, Shane, we saw the preview for this movie yesterday. It's I nope. was going to say it bears a striking resemblance to nope. So I'm actually, yeah, um, no, this is actually a, uh, we're going to talk about the movie Moonfall for the next couple hours. Are you? Not, I'm, oh I'm not, God. I'm I was, kidding. I was like, I'm holy fucking fuck. with you. What, we're actually going to talk about Moonraker. Oh, uh, even better. The um, forgotten Bond film. <laughs> uh, the screen then devolves into black and red static with the occasional phrase repeating the original warning to not go outside appearing on the screen before completely uh, going completely dark. Some white text then appears over the darkness saying, It's in the light. The moon came in. He found me. Through the mirror. Moonlight white. White like eyes. Not light, but blood. I drown in him. If you are afraid, we will look together. Then it cuts to an outside camera showing the moon accompanied with a large group of people screaming in the background. And that, from the emergency alert all the way up to the moon... Uh, the moon's appearance is one of the most well-known examples of analog horror weather service by the YouTube channel local 58 TV. Hmm. I uh, was thinking that it was the third verse of nights in white satin that you were reciting, but that is going to be next week's episode. Oh, okay. I thought right. you were detailing a Clark family picnic. Um, no, uh, legal says I can't talk about those anymore. Um, ah, I see. So the mm. backyard taco finally elected to come <laughs> to get us, huh? Yeah, they yeah. cut our funding with last week's episode. It 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 was it was a bad idea. Man, um, we can't even afford to pay attention. I what? Exactly. <laughs> Some um, jokes write themselves. There are there are two lies for this uh for this topic. And yes, Ooh. I'm going to be talking today about the genre known as analog horror. Is there any digital manipulation in the analog horror? No, then it would be digital horror. That's yeah, Shane. Duh. I was referring uh. to my digits. Oh, oh, well. Fidget the digit. Well, if you do, you're going to clean it up. Especially I with the 11th to. digit. Um, <laughs> <gasps> we, we don't talk don't about talk that. talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> We're better than that. I'm not. Um, <laughs> oh, wait. Horror just... Uh, horror. Illegal just sent me a couple of notes. I don't want to read them, but they seem like pretty bad 
Uh, horror is <laughs> it such says, a. F- do it, you won't. <laughs> Did I not just remark? I think what was it uh, a week or two ago that I? Oh, it was when we were watching the movie and the lead up to it, like the um, the weird little trailer stuff that they had uh, running before. Where I said the word horror, when featured prominently, really needs to be appropriately articulated, yes. lest we devolve into horror. something that will offend someone. Horror. And here comes Bruh. Michael with horror. analog horror. horror. <laughs> It's such a fascinating genre, in part because it's so varied. Uh, As long as there is an attempt to terrify the audience, anything could legitimately fit into the horror genre, whether they succeed or not. Indeed. Am Um, I getting ahead by asking if no sleep is analog horror? Or is it because it's on a website it means no way? Uh no what what do you mean no sleep? Um, are the subreddit community no sleep? Oh um well those are more s- stories I guess um it all depends and I'll I'll go into detail about what makes analog horror analog horror um because I'm I'm approaching this in the same way that I approach ergotic uh, literature last time in that I'm gonna give you guys some examples of it and then I'm also gonna show you guys. Um, a couple of really good examples of analog horror, and then we'll discuss and talk about what really constitutes it. Okay, right. much yeah. excite. Mm-hmm. Such wow. uh, a lot of successful works of horror tap into primitive human fears. The fear of the unknown is a prime example. What's on the other side of that corner? What's at the top of the stairs that's covered in dark- darkness? What's that behind John in the doorway? Other more specific, <laughs> my God. <laughs> ah! um, other more specific questions that might put you on ease: Is there a hidden message found in the static of your CRTV, a uh, CRT, uh, when it's between channels? Uh, what's on this unmarked VHS that you found in your video collection? What is this boil that is growing up on my posterior? That's talking to me and, and yelling in German. It's very odd. Um, oh, no. Stephen King story. <laughs> oh, no. Um, has he written anything about like a haunted boil? I feel like He has that... not written a haunted boil, but one of my favorites uh, that I encountered recently of his uh, stories is that there is just a finger that pokes up out of a drain, and it is the inhabitants of the apartment having to deal with the fact that there's just this reaching probing finger that came up hey. out of the same drain, and then later on moves over to the toilet. Uh, Uh-oh. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I got my proctology exam a little bit early. Ooh, you're about a quart low. (laughs) You need to top it off. Um, Careful. Squatty potty. (laughs) Careful. Uh, I see legal almost about to leave a a note again. Um, For some, tapping into some anxiety slash fears of yesteryear is enough to incite feelings of terror. I know that I felt that as a kid staring at the TV static. That actually kind of like unnerves me a bit. Um, just because, like, I who always, knows what would happen in the next moment, if that makes I sense. Gonna, I was going to say that the joke about ant racing was, like, the static racing on the screen. And I would, like, focus. I would let my eyes, like, unfocus and focus on it to try and make shapes. Yeah. Uh, wasn't that just when you were watching the fuzzed out pornographic stuff on hey, other channels hey, like hey, HBO? He's all hey, like, hey, I, I, didn't, I think that's a butt I, cheek, but I can't. I'm just going to picture it as one. I didn't ask for you to... <laughs> to contextualize it i did i'm contextualizing for myself those are some of my favorite times in hotel it's room. actually i would stare and i would try and see if i could uh, it's supposed to make an image kind of like a schooner oh it's not a schooner you dumb shit it's a sailboat <laughs> uh speaking of which not to completely devolve here but i listened to kevin smith's uh criticism criticism of uh the Batman today, and oh. it put me in a real sour mood because I realized I I don't really I I was a, an avowed acolyte of Kevin Smith for a long time, he doesn't like and it. I think he and I have have started to part ways because the wacky tobacco might be just finally changing him fundamentally. Uh oh. Well, 
Michael, continue your presentation. I'm yes, only going to we'll get around pretend, to that. I'm going to pretend that I'm one of your students. I'm going to pay half attention to you real quick. But in any half event. attention. Oh, that's uh, but so also, nice. It's apropos <laughs> because um, speaking about fear of the darkness, that is actually something that they utilize really effectively in the introductory sequences of the Batman, it's, which oh. is completely spoiler free. But introducing the character and the idea of fear is they show a lot of the villains in Gotham who then see the bat signal after you know their fell deeds. And then they start, you know, running out to get away from the the scene of the crime, and they just see darkened alleyways and you know dark corners and rooftops, and sort of the looming threat of the Batman being out there is enough to sort of cause them to quiver in their boots and then have to run away. He's it was really in well done for me. Hmm. So, uh, in any event, but uh, speaks to your discussion of horror for this yeah, episode. Yeah, yes. and and that could be something that you could con- like say that scene did have horror elements in it, whether or not they intended sure. to. If it incited a general feeling of terror, then mm-hmm. they succeeded. If M. Night Shyamalan can attempt to do this by just showing wind moving through blades of grass <laughs> oh, and, oh. you know, jostling tree limbs, I think anybody <laughs> can try it at this point. Dude, what? God, the trees, trees are going to kill us. No. What? No. Look at that fur. It's coming right for us. <laughs> Run. He's coming right for us. <laughs> My favorite scene there in the field, they see the breeze and they're like, run! <laughs> I, that film is still the worst thing I've ever seen in my Michael's, life. I'm I on the record it. about I it. I love it so much. It's so bad. Michael, Michael's over Dude. here going, uh, oh, let's do a live episode of reacting to us watching The Shining when we're missing gold. We should uh-huh. just all rewatch The Happening and just oh, fall, man. fall asleep. Oh man, the hit no! I would happening. be awake and just screaming at the screen. Is like, why did the tiger mauling this person hug him in slow motion? <laughs> is there a single they love person each other. on this planet that's sane that likes this movie? I don't know. I've never met one, but uh, I'm sure they exist. <laughs> if you do, leave a comment or a review. You won't <laughs> <laughs> tell us. What sort of rationalization you have to go through to say that it was an actually good movie? Um, <sighs> the concept of analog horror is very nebulous. Nebulous. At oh, it's best. nebulous too. Uh, it's nebulous, uh, which means that I'm going to copy myself from the last episode, like I just said, and instead uh, tell you about my favorite analog horror series and in the process of doing so, give you a better idea of what this genre is without being too technical. Okay. Because I feel like that's a better approach instead of saying, let me define everything, like the jokes that I used to make. Right? You don't want me to just, you know, completely recount the entirety of Deathbed again in sequence? like. But, I mean, that was fun. <laughs> oh, <okay>. <laughs> because <laughs> I liked hearing the blow for blow of, of the guy that was stuck behind the painting because he made some deal with the bed. or No, the bed uh, wanted to torture him uh-huh. for some bizarre reason. And yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that was fun. Me defining... Devil bed topics and stuff like that like heavy water was not um i'm not going to be covering influences um or like major like a lot of different things that came together to form this genre uh as to do so would get quickly bogged down in nuance um yes there are easy to find influences in movies such as the blair witch project the ring and the vhs series uh but to talk about how those influenced the genre in detail would be way more technical than i would like Instead, I want to man- mention the major tropes that were taken from these movies uh, so that you can better understand the appeal for the genre. Um, the main trope borrowed from the Blair Witch Project is the found footage aspect. Uh, yeah. This movie is considered to be the progenitor of the found footage um, yeah. genre, uh, and it is the first of its kind. That was the first movie that was the found and footage we've, genre. And we've actually, through the course of our podcast, talked about Blair Witch, mm-hmm. uh, on like influences on Shane, and then we've piggybacked on that to paranormal activity for my experience on the same thing so i feel like mm-hmm. we're, we're kind of on the same page on this mm-hmm. absolutely and uh both of those films still hold up to me dude. i mean paranormal activity was kind of wonky regardless but it still uh, holds up dude i think paranormal activity 2 fucking slaps still that movie t- terrifies me okay it's, of- it's been a while since i've watched that one so i'll have to investigate that's one of those things where it's like um and i i i think back to uh the first carrie uh, the original Carrie movie, where um, you have to judge it based off of what uh, was popular at the time, or yeah. what, like the fact that it was kind of the progenitor of that sort of subgenre found footage. Um, 
as opposed to now where we've all been desensitized to these found footage paranormal activities like how many paranormal activities have there been like six or something like that there's there's been Too a many. lot yeah um, probably six or seven so like it would it wouldn't be fair to the original to judge it from our perspective today um but that's me getting into nuance here um the major influence from the ring is actually not the girl in the well uh, but the idea that the analog medium can drastically affect one's life in the real world, whether by some bitch crawling out of the TV or the TV <laughs> acting. Yeah, I, I wanted to write that. I like um, it. <laughs> or the TV uh, acting as a cognito hazard, which is one of my favorite words. I love that word. Cognito hazard is something that affects your perception of reality. Cognition. Huh. Um, it, I, I mentioned it a lot when I did that kind of like half episode on uh, the SCP Foundation, because that's mm. one of the major... Uh, things within that sort of literary thing. You're spending well, a lot of time defining this. Is that an actual word, or are you making it up? No, it's an actual word. Well, okay. I don't know if it's an actual word in terms of in the dictionary, but like the idea. Asking. Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like it it's also the name of our new metal band. So Cognito Hazard. Yeah, because you, you listen to it too long, you start <laughs> losing your grip on reality. Um, I'll admit, even in preparation for this episode, I never watched VHS. Or any of those. What? Um, yeah, yeah. It's it's weird because I'm such a big fan of the analog horror uh, genre, but I never watched one of the major influences on it. Well, um, personally, I don't think you're missing much. Just well, for me, good, if I can offer anything. There's okay. a good Ty West one in there. The what? There's a good Ty West short film in, or short inside of VHS. Oh, yeah, yeah I remember him. Uh, Will Smith wrote a song about him. Yeah. Wild Wild West. <laughs> yep, that's exactly the Ty West. West. Ty West. You're, you're exactly Desperado. <laughs> Why don't you come um, on your senses? Come to your senses. <laughs> but I Man, did... The Eagles are going to sue us so hard. No. no, we'd have to actually attempt to sing that correctly in order for us to get Fucking copyright hate on the them. Eagles. Um, I will pull this cab over. <laughs> <laughs> I will turn us around. Um, but I did skim over this, uh, the Wikipedia synopsis for VHS, uh, okay. and I can definitely see a lot of influences and tropes that came from that movie or series. Um, there are a lot of, uh, analog horror series that are more anthology based as opposed to, uh, a cohesive A to B plot, like a movie format of sorts. Uh, instead of, instead it focuses more on the world building and hinting at the overall plot instead of directly serving it to the audience. Uh, in VHS, as I understand it from the synopsis, like I mentioned, the plot is more given through the short films that the criminals watch instead of directly through the actions of the criminals themselves. Is that correct? From what I remember. In, yes. in a way, yeah, yeah. More so, or less. And, and it kind of, and as I was doing this research, I did realize why I enjoy it so much and why I enjoyed ergotic literature because it's not being, the plot isn't being served to you on a silver platter. You, in order to understand a lot of the nuance or a lot of the overall uh, overall ideas of it, you actually have to be sitting down and paying attention and looking and trying to interpret what's going on. Well, then you need to watch some David Lynch post haste. <sighs> yeah, I'm good. Start just with Mulholland know, Drive and just, just see where you wind up. Just because I know okay. that it makes Dewan upset, I'm still not going to watch David Lynch. Damn. Yeah, I don't blame you, uh, to be completely candid. Again, like there's some folks will watch cinema for the sake of watching it, but uh, yeah, not everybody you know has to subject themselves to things like this. I almost forgot. The Juan has a family. I can't go that hard. Um, <laughs> the Juan, I'll, I'll meet you. I'll meet you in the middle, buddy. I'll watch. Uh, I'll watch Dune. <laughs> <laughs> get to watch Pug Atreides over here and the uh, onomatopoeia death Holy wristwatch. Shit, did you just feel that? He just he just broke his vocal cords from shouting so loud when I said that. I what heard him say? screaming hey! from the future. <laughs> hey! Hey! Um, so let's break down the common tropes uh, that occur within the genre now to understand why the genre is taking off in popularity. So I originally wanted to write this episode all the way back in October, um, but I kind of lost interest in part because a lot of the uh, analog horror things that were a, a series that were occurring at the time had either ended or were kind of in a hiatus. Not a lot of people were being interested in the genre um, because it was getting kind of stale. 
but now it actually is um, almost having a renaissance of sorts, and I'll kind of cover that towards the end as well. Okay. Uh, I do have an example that is from a more recent um, analog horror, and I'm talking about recent. I mean, like the original series came out in like 2016, so this this genre is fairly new, mm. um, but it's already had its like its initial interest, and then it's already died a bit, and now it's coming back again. So it's having so, it's having arcs. Yes, yeah, yeah, because and when we cover the tropes, you can kind of see there isn't a lot of wiggle room um, for the main ideas that I'm I'll be presenting. As in, you have there's not a lot of variations that you can approach with it. Okay, um, and so from a lot of people, it can it can be an easy you can easily see why it would get stale very quickly. So it all was right. left on the counter unattended for five days. Yeah. More like five minutes. Um, so this next section, because this is the only one that I really had an interesting title name. Brace for uh, header, kids. Tropes come get them while they're hot. Um, <laughs> like Boo. I, I on this is the one time I actually didn't care about writing uh, section headers uh, well. So uh, <laughs> attempt to write them well. Okay, yeah, there Shane, we is go. that better? Hot tamales and red hot. Um, so. The first um, trope I want to talk about is the emergency alert system. You guys know what that is, right? Yes, emergency yeah, yeah. broadcast system. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. it's the it's, rumble. Uh, it is only a test. before I poop myself. Yes. What? <laughs> I said it's the rumbling in my tummy that's warning me that I'm going to poop myself. That hits too close to home. <laughs> He's just sitting there, and all of a sudden, like his stomach gurgles, and he just hears the uh, emergency broadcast system like siren going off, and his... <laughs> like, oh, I gotta go. Um, this is one of the original aspects of the genre, uh, serving briefly as a separate sub genre before the idea of analog horror really took off. Um, many of the older analog horror series uh, relied on this tactic of driving the horror home, uh, which is why I opened <laughs> with. Yeah, I said that. Yeah, I, that it's was only a... polite. I mean, you paid for it. You might as well buy her an Uber. Um, uh, driving the sex worker, sorry, home. Um, which is why I opened with one of the more well-known examples in the introduction. When okay. people think of analog horror and the emergency alert system aspect within it, that's one of the main ones that gets brought up. Um, this is a pretty easy tactic to get the audience spooked. Uh, the loud piercing alarms designed to get viewers' attention uh, already gets its audience on edge. Uh, if there was a scoring sheet, uh, the series would get bonus points if the uh, EAS uh, actually interrupted something else, like a commercial or similar programming, instead of just starting with it and going on, right? So that's actually what this uh, the introduction did. It actually showed a lineup of what was going on next before it interrupted with the um, broadcast. All right. Uh, Yes. Uh, more points if the event in question somehow takes control of the broadcast midway through to convince the audience to instead embrace the dangerous event instead of hiding from the event, as in the intro- introduction. Because that is actually something that has happened in the past in real life, um, where people can, especially back in the day for uh, local television stations, uh, if you know the frequency and you have your own equipment, you can interrupt a broadcast. You can't really do that now with digital, uh, as far as I'm aware, but you could do that back in the day with analog uh, towers. All you got to do is hack into the stream, baby boy. Yeah, you just type on your computer and... And whatever you do, don't I'm cross in. the streams. Yes. Now, well, to you... contextualize... I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, no, you can cross the streams. That's how you get control. That's how you get Gozer. Um, the... To contextualize for people who existed, you know, in the 1940s, this is essentially like H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds kind say. of situation, yes. right? Mm-hmm. You're mm-hmm. kind of getting that. And unfortunately, you were probably, I wouldn't necessarily, I, I misspoke. Not unfortunately. Fortunately, we probably won't ever encounter that national panic again. You can, you can be honest. Because thankfully, Shane. there's enough disinformation, <laughs> hopefully, that floats out. But uh, that's the first thing that sprung to mind when you started talking about this, for me at least. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because and, – and it worked really well when H.G. Wells did it, right? And so by kind of jumping into or like kind of taking that sort of idea, that's where a lot of these um, episodes 
get that horror in, get that ter- terrifying aspect. Um, the next topic or uh, trope is uh, instructional or educational guides. Uh, this is another mainstay in analog horror. Um, here would be some sort of educational recording, like when you'd see in school on the wheel TV set your teacher borrowed from the AV club for all you Gen Xers and millennials. Um, <laughs> so wheeled it in. The teacher doesn't want to teach today. They get the, the TV with the VCR and then they put in some instructional video that you have to sit and watch. Right. So that is actually a mainstay trope in analog horror where they have some sort of uh, introductory topic being discussed, something like a camping or wilderness guide or a stargazing guide um, or an introductory video about a a new product line from a company. Um, Depending on the context, the information will start to deviate from the original message, uh, becoming more, more nefarious or corrupted in some way. Um, And we'll, we'll see an example about that. So, for the listeners, uh, after I'm done with the tropes, I'm going to have the, them li- or watch a couple of uh, analog horror videos to get a better idea of the overall genre, and then we'll have a discussion. In the show notes, I've already listed the four that I'm going to be showing them. So when we get to that point, I'll be like, here, stop the stop the match. Stop, <laughs> stop the damn stop match. Stop the video. Stop, the li- stop listening. Go watch those, and then come back for the discussion. <laughs> Yikes. And also, I'm going to correct because I, I want to make sure I was right. It, it's Orson Welles. Yeah, the not H.G. Wells. It's not what H.G. The Wells. Fuck? I got yeah. angry. I was like, wait. wait. A, yeah. Am, I, am, am I on the right place? Like, it's Orson Welles. Yeah, yeah. No, but, you're okay, right. All right. I, Thank H.G. you. I, I just, I, if I didn't say something, I would be angry at myself and then for allowing us to lie to the public. Yeah. I would be upset with myself, too, because I should know better. Um, Let's see. Cronenberg would be proud. The next trope, body horror. Arr, um, arr. There are a lot of examples of body horror in this genre, uh, either by some disease that changes or mutates the, bi- the biology of those infected, or by experimentation from some corporation that is influenced by the corrupting antagonistic force. So a lot of these um, channels have some sort of like antagonistic force that is like directly shaping the events that you are witnessing. Um it's a little bit more difficult to explain other than just antagonistic force because there are a lot of the, the series isn't uh, each series has a different kind of antagonist. Okay. So we're thinking like scanners and uh... I've never seen that movie. Okay. Surprise. <laughs> uh, so you think the fly then he hasn't seen that movie is the uh, like what Cronenberg are you referencing? Oh, that's what you mean. Um, so just like body horror. So like the thing. <laughs> Or the fly, or, the, or fly, or whatever. Like everything that he said. Yeah, yeah. Yes, 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 yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, let's see. Deep Root Disease in the channel Gemini Home Entertainment is a great example. We're not talking about that this week. <sighs> Sorry, I, I have to talk about the Deep Root Disease. Um, it's some sort of plant-like organism that pierces through the skin and makes its way to your bones and blood vessels, uh, where it eventually replaces them with the organism itself, eventually leaving the human rooted to the ground and looking like a model of the vascular system. Um, The human is still alive throughout the whole process and is still alive after it is completed. Um, I wanted to show uh, another version or another video from that channel that actually shows a lot of those, but I felt like the context, you wouldn't have gotten it. (laughs) So it would have been a little bit more terrifying, but that builds off of other previously defined episodes uh, in the series. So it wouldn't have had that same punch. Okay. Um, There's also some strong annihilation vibes for those who have not seen it. Oh, yeah. A little Denis Villeneuve. Mm. Um, also, guys, don't worry, Michael. I feel like Shane just misheard it because I think what Shane thought you were saying was was dead root or deep deep root dead root deep root disease. Yeah, he uh-huh. thought you were saying deep root sneeze, and that's why he thought it was a euphemism. Oh. <laughs> uh, but it's not that. <laughs> Is that what the kids are calling it nowadays? So oh man, I just I had just, a deep no, root I was, sneeze. I was going for the Australian because if oh, you're not okay. familiar, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah I'm just I'm trying to indemnify you here. Oh, I oh. see. Well, <laughs> unfortunately, that might be a lost cause, friend. But uh, so I can go root myself. <laughs> Fuck you. I'll go root myself. Um, the next trope is corrupt electronics. Uh, this is a fascinating one in part because. Of... Oh, sorry. That's me being excited. <laughs> I like this trope. 
Okay. Here goes, uh, here's John. Oh my God, I'm about to scram. Uh, I'm about to deep root sneeze. Um, <laughs> is that the new black snake moan? <laughs> it's actually the uh, the last area I have to find on Elden Ring. Oh, I see. <laughs> and that's after the Pope Turtle. Uh, oh, Pope man. Turtle is Bay. Uh, <laughs> Pretty dope. I, I fucking sat next to that Pope Turtle for I'm not joking like five minutes just vibing. Uh because I just <laughs> loved that I, I loved that it existed in the game and I wanted to just bathe in that moment. What's he's up, baby? Like a, he's like a bear sized turtle with a Pope hat. It's it's, it's beautiful. What's not to love? It's not exactly. to love. You wanted um, to be his cardinal. It, <laughs> it's better than Alter Boy. Uh, Would that be a some, cardinal <laughs> sin is the question. Provided he's not the altar boy. Uh, mm-hmm. In some series, <laughs> the antagonistic force of the series can affect in some ways control electronics. Why Got this antagonist like dick. <laughs> antagonist these nuts. Um, the antagonist There's of the series <laughs> uh, can affect in some cases control the electronics, whether by taking control of a GPS um, or by being able to directly control what appears on a screen. Um, let's see here. A silly There's exa- also a really fun X Files episode that plays around that, where you've got like a oh, yeah? sentient uh, machine that controls a building that is just killing people with systems inside the building. Huh. Okay. Um, let's see. One of the more recent uh channels, the Mandela Catalog, uh, by Alex Kister, I believe, uh, uses this trope extensively with the intent. Kissed damn near killed her. God <laughs> damn it. See, I, You're if I wrote that out... comedy gold! Ah, it's even better if his name's Keister. No, it is Kister. Oh, wow. No, no, Missed no an Keister. opportunity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, There's always the next life. Yes. Indeed. Uh, the Mandela catalog uses this trope extensively uh, with the antagonistic force corrupting and eventually driving people to... Um, Go commit die uh, by somehow stealing people's children if they are left alone in a room with a television set. So poltergeist, yeah, yeah, kind of. It doesn't explain how the kid is abducted, like how the, the kid disappears. Takes him. Well, the um, kid's getting sucked into the TV again. Dang it! Told you to bolt the kid down. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> and you heard it here first, Michael. You heard it here first, guys. Bolt you, the kid down. Uh, his me. new name is Michael Bolton. Uh, <laughs> oof. <laughs> Big oof. She can't have backyard taco. I bolted her. Um, a kind of silly example is the um, one of the forces in Event Tide Media Center's Week Ahead on Triday. Yes, Triday, not Friday. Um, where the force, which is like a, a floating. So if, did you guys ever play the Sims game? Sims? Oh, at all? I mean, isn't, isn't Melissa obsessed with that game, Shane? Uh, yeah, she plays Sims. And so you, there's she, she a, a minute minute too, right? there's a diamond that floats over the head of the character mm-hmm. that you're in control. So picture that, but it's like, it's supposed to be more Lovecraftian in nature. So it's a um, tentacle. No, in in that it's it's a floating object that has a bunch of like fractals that are appearing around it mm-hmm. that uh, emanates a purple light, and so on Friday it will actually invade houses and places that contain the number three. Uh, so on that day, the people of New Trilight have to remove all examples of three from their homes, including uh, clocks, television sets, what if, anything. What if they have three the kids? The what? <laughs> What if they had three kids? Uh, as long it's it's the physical number three. As long as they're not bolted down, you should be yes. able to move them. Mm-hmm. What if they had a kid that only had three fingers? Again, <laughs> it has to be the physical number three written somewhere. I don't think I'm understanding your lesson. So you know the number where you count one, two, three, and you write that number on no, a piece doesn't. of paper. That's fair. He can only count to two. Arizona um, school system. Uh, <laughs> Damn public education. Yeah. Foiled okay. again. Okay. <laughs> Man, you'd be um, really pissed you go out and all of a sudden like your your car has got a three on the license plate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the most common explanation for this is that the antagonistic force has the ability to produce, produce frequencies of some sort that can cause television distortions. Um, let's see. The next trope is Lovecraft. 
So there's a lot of Lovecraftian Bullshit. vibes in analog. No, no, it's true. Mm. Um, this trope is actually what really keeps me invested in the genre, as several several popular series really embrace the cosmic horror aspect. Um, in these series, the antagonistic force is really something that is above human understanding, similar to Cthulhu and other elder gods. Um, I am putting spoilers in here for some channels, so if you really plan on doing a deep dive yourself, just skip ahead like irresponsible five of you. Are you putting yeah. Holmberg's Morning Sickness on that list as well? Ooh, it is Alan Eldridge Horror. <laughs> I don't understand what is going on. Um, so Cup. yeah, just skip ahead another five minutes if if you really don't want spoilers. Okay, I'm gonna um, skip. Spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> John just leaves the call for five minutes. <laughs> Uh, the best example of this comes from Gemini Home Entertainment, where a planet-sized life form called Iris slowly invades the solar system, corrupting and uh, fleshifying uh, the outer planets before starting to secretly invade Earth through alien life forms and diseases. So someone was really upset at Johnny Resnick and decided to get back in the worst way possible. I do want the world to see me, and they will Indeed. never understand. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is made to be broken. <laughs> I don't I want, want you to know who I am. I'm still a mystery. Well, I'm um, named Iris, though. <laughs> uh, another good example is a very new series that started last December um, called The Smile Tapes, where we learn that some alien fungi fungus... I don't know why I said Among that. Us? So, uh, yeah, Among Us? Among Us. Um, where we learn that some alien fungus has started to infect people, causing their faces to contort into a smile, eventually destroying their facial muscles while the patient loses their mind and becomes homicidal. Uh, as the patient loses their mind, they start to communicate with this supposedly human thing that wants to spread happiness to all through inhaling this fungus. The smile tape's bullshit? No, it's true. Uh, it I actually really found that in the process... It's, I'm sorry? It sounds similar to the cordyceps uh, infection in Last of Us. It it's also there. sounds like Christianity. Ooh, I want you to be happy. Get him, Dad. Um, yeah, no, it is, it is true. It's actually um, a series that I discovered in the process of researching this. Because like I said, there has been a resurgence in analog horror um, series in, in, in the genre and, um, as a whole. And so I have found a lot more new series that I hadn't known existed. And it was really nice catching up on a lot of these new ones and following them on YouTube so I can, you know, stay with them as they post new stuff. Um, I'm, I'm not intentionally scoff laughing at you. I just want you to know that you are adopting odd cadences that are very evocative of a scene in Pulp Fiction that I know you're fond of. So you started <sighs> walkanizing. I, yeah, that is, I don't know where it's coming from. Iris. I'm not trying on purpose to. And Iris, uh, uh, he carried that ring around in his ass. Uh, and then when he know, died. If I had been taken by that television, it wouldn't be me talking to you right now. It'd be your dad talking to my son, Jim. <laughs> but I'm talking to you. Uh, as mentioned in the beginning, Local 58 TV... Uh, hints at the moon becoming something else, which in a later episode is labeled his throne. Uh, his throne drives people insane by looking at it, especially once it moves closer to the earth in a later episode called sky watching. Uh, it actually, the sky watching episode is an educational, um, guide, as I mentioned in the previous tropes, mm -hmm. uh, where it's someone that actually hijacks the broadcast and um, zooms in on the moon, and we see a lot of almost like flesh-like aspects to the moon where we have almost like ten uh, tendons connecting things. It's supposed to be very evocative of something that's like body horror of sorts, right? A and posterior, then a, yeah. Yes, yes. And then it disappears, and then it, um, the clouds suddenly part because it's supposed to be covered by clouds, and the clouds part, and the moon is like 10 times larger. You hear an air uh, siren going off in the distance, and people pretty much screaming and you see the person kind of like drop everything and then like walk in front of the camera and raise his hands up like almost in worship it's it's a very interesting video okay um, would you say that the people screaming had the moon hit their eyes like a big pizza pie it was amore mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they they just love his throne not hungry thanks <laughs> well 
If you well, do, you'll clean it up. The starting line of that particular episode is, look at the stars. Look how they shine for you. No, <laughs> And all really, the things that you do. Really, look. <laughs> look at the stars. And the moon was colored yellow, so it, it, it fits it perfectly. It's a big ass. <laughs> well, your skin, Michael, your, uh, your skin and bone. <laughs> it also turns into something beautiful. It's body horror. Oh, you know ah! I love you so. Um, the uh, Eventide Media Center is another prime example. <laughs> Eventide, damn it! Eventide, even <laughs> even flow. Even, um, ooh, don't <laughs> Sam Camacho somewhere. <laughs> even flow. <laughs> I honestly don't understand what he says. Uh, The actual line, Michael, to let you know is even flow, thoughts arrive like butterflies. Oh, okay. But he don't know, (laughs) so he chases them away. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) How's that for a of Eddie Vedder? Beautifully written. Mm hmm. Um, so even Evan Tide even Media Tide. Center is a prime example of Lovecraftian elements in their videos. I admit, I'll admit, I could not find a unified antagonistic force in this series, but one of my favorite videos from this channel um, is a video on unusual architecture referencing M.C. Escher art. Mm. Do you, you guys, do you know yes. who that is, John? No. M.C. Escher? Okay. No, I do not. Uh, he... Uh, You've seen some of the artwork, I'm sure, where it's essentially like if you can imagine a room that is made of like myriad sets of staircases that all go in different directions. Oh, so I got one better. It's uh, one of his paintings is technically featured in one of the earlier episodes of Rick and Morty where they have the um, they have a turtle and they're running from some vampire or something. The uh, the truth tortoise. Yes, yeah, yeah, and there's a bunch of stairways and everything. That's based yeah. off of an MC Escher. I oh, think he yeah, did yeah, yeah, yeah. wood. Okay. I think I'm he did wood up. carving or something like that. I think uh, or I'm wood picking up what you're putting down. If he now. does, he'd clean it up. Yeah, yes. I got you. Um, so thank you. The video has unusual architecture featuring those sort of pictures and how to build them yourself. Um, talking about four dimensional shapes, including how to construct one, um, stating that they are impar- imp- impossible, impossible. Uh, because our psyches cannot our psyches cannot handle it um and it actually shows an interesting one where it shows it's called the um penrose tri bar where it's the it's a triangle that is uh situated i can't do it because it's a four-dimensional object but in that it's supposed to just look it up um (laughs) listeners just look it up but essentially it's supposed to be something that you can't visually process because it's like a never-ending staircase. It's supposed to, um, it's supposed to be starting and stopping at different points. That makes no sense. Like it's like a Mobius strip. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. That was what. Uh, that was the reference I was trying to make. Okay. And then they actually say like, let's rotate it to see how it looks from a different angle. And as they do, the whole visual, like the, the actual recording, just breaks. Okay. So um, it's, it's kind of like in the fourth kind when the creature shows up at the end, you have distended mouth, and then everything goes all staticky. <laughs> Yes, yeah, in that in that case. Yeah, actually that is For those who understand the reference who've seen that <laughs> ghastly film, but uh, yeah. thank you. Yes. Yeah. Um the next there's only two more tropes. Um the next one is jump scare is a plenty. Unfortunately, the uh jump scare trope is very very common in this genre. Thankfully, it's only visual uh with there being no audio jump scares. Uh usually it's when a character in these videos uh dies. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, Might as well. Yeah. Um, jump, jump, jump. Um, you all with their <laughs> might as well. Um, with their end being shown as a hideous face jumping to the screen. So like an original, like stereotypical jump scare. It's like wah, yeah. Um, like this the type end of, of horror... paranormal activity. Yeah, the exactly. Literal last shot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or the guy walking out from behind the dumpster behind the Lenny's in uh lynch films so in mulholland drive there's a crispy critter that yes just shows up yes so. oh, okay gotcha um this type of horror is usually at the forefront with less subtlety than other genres uh and then the last one i wanted to mention is indie i called it indie attitude i don't know why um this isn't really a trope but it's a major factor within the genre 
and is uh, especially seen when uh, considering there isn't really a big budget for a lot of YouTube videos. Um, and that is essentially where this genre is located in is YouTube. Um, because they don't have big budget, this genre is a lot of, it, it's, it's pretty low. It's pretty indie. Most of these things are um, maybe a crew of several people, um, depending on if they actually have actors or not, but it's usually one or two people that are doing the whole thing. Uh, and because of the way analog horror is uh, designed, where you have either the emergency alert system or you have the educational guide where a lot of it is text on the screen or something like that or something that you can animate, it becomes a lot easier uh, and a lot less cost restrictive for people to get into the genre, which is something that I really wanted to bring up, which is why I'm bringing it up right now, mm. in that as long as you have a basic understanding of video production, you can get into the analog horror genre. Okay. It's a real DIY kind of activity is what you're saying. Yes, very much okay. so. Um, the closest example that I can find that where it was a big budget series <laughs> TV show movie that said it was analog horror uh, was Netflix's um, series Archive 81, which... Uh, released uh earlier this year and you've January, recommended I believe. that already a couple times haven't you yes i have yeah and, and it actually is based off of a podcast of the same name archive 81 uh which i have not li yet listened to but the show itself was interesting and i'll guarantee one thing it's not the magnus archives no no no, no. I, well man, i can't I judge the right podcast but <sighs> i would say that they share a lot of similar veins okay. in that based off of what i read about the podcast it's a person's audio logs while they are trying to restore um, interviews and stuff from the 90s. So this is a modern day um, show. Okay. Sounds um, like Magnus a little bit, except a little foot more concise to begin, maybe? Yes. Yeah, I would say that. Where there is an... I don't know too much about the Magnus archives because, uh, again, I'm a lazy person. And I disappoint everyone that gives me well, recommendations. And I wasn't trying... But, oh, God. Sorry. Oh, no, that was mainly for Shane, because Shane recommended it a lot to me, and then I never followed up on it. Because well, you're so interested in all these I things. Was gonna, until, I was yeah. going to interject and apologize to Shane, because I actually started listening to Magnus, and I think I'm on episode six, and the reason I know that is because Shane was excited for me to get to episode seven, um, which I think is one of his favorite episodes. Mm -hmm. And then Dune happened in a big way, and Dune has consumed everything as far as yeah, outside media. Because now, if I'm not listening to like Last Pod in your mom's house, I am catching up on Pod Emperor of Dune to deep nerd dive on on the Dune saga. So, I will get back to Magnus Shane. I promise. I really five enjoyed books it so far. in. You know, I can't really blame you for having set you down that path either. So, yeah, I'm. There's nothing in my head anymore except for Dune stuff. Everything is Dune spice. Worms, Rackus, mm -hmm. Duncan, Idaho, just <laughs> fucking for centuries. <laughs> he fucks uh, across time and space. Yeah, uh, he's 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 Duncan more than D's nuts. But uh, damn, we I, don't that, say that anymore. That guy has a lot of ideas in his head. Bad. Um, <laughs> when I start uh, getting electric shocks whenever I start saying these things. <laughs> no, then you'll start getting like don't, into those shocks. Don't. Don't <laughs> hurt me, daddy. Don't. Um, so with that, uh, I do want to show you guys a couple of um, videos. These uh, are so just for the listener, still images of you jacking it. That is a lot of horror. Uh, I also recorded it on a VHS to give that analog feel to you it. You better for have once, a fisheye lens, fucko. For, for oh, once no. you pronounce it's that correctly. Is, there ain't no curvature for me. It is just a um, picture of a horror. Oh, no, not a horror. <laughs> Anything but that. Um, so for the listeners, uh, there, I'll leave in a couple yeah, of seconds. There's, of, you yeah, know, you check out the stuff in the show notes. Have fun. Then, or if you don't care, you've already turned this episode off. <laughs> exactly. So. Okay, yeah. So that was the first one. That was fun. That was mm. fun. Did I ever tell you guys the story of when my ex-girlfriend was going to a uh, party? Yeah, you fucked her in the ass because she cheated on you. Yeah, we know. Gross. No, I would never do that. <laughs> um, that was never me. No, it's disgusting. Why would you? First of all, you don't have the right. Oh, you don't have the right. Oh, you don't have the right. I have the right turn <laughs> in 500 feet. 
okay. So it was this night. Um, it was her friend's birthday party. It was going to be a uh, talking stick. And how we kind of planned our evening was we were going we to the don't casino. Don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> we were going to the casino uh, for her friend's birthday party. We we're going to stay there for a few hours. And then there, my buddy was playing a show at a now uh, closed venue that was called Joe's Grotto. Um, and it was it was a, a fun planned night. And this is before we had MapQuest on our phones. So I had a printout of directions or like screen or whatever. As mm-hmm. you do. They all, I did do. Yahoo directions or yeah. Map quest. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So I lived on Shane's side of town then. So it was basically you take the 101 all the way around. It's just a, a big, big loop. Um, and you can see where the casino is. And I'm driving. Um, and I followed the directions to a T rather than my eyes. And I ended up on like canal dirt roads. <laughs> like lost in like almost corn stalks. And it's the only time I've ever been truly lost while having a landmark to go towards. But it feels like in a video game when you're trying to progress further, but there's enough roadblocks that you can't get over that you're trying to find mm-hmm. the soonest way that's out of your way to, to get mm-hmm. there. Anyway. But you um, were on the fastest available route. Mm-hmm. That video reminds me of that because I was following the directions. I was like, where is this fucking taking me? Because it's I put the destination as the casino. Google deleted the document. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Goddamn electronic devices anyway, are always was, foiling me. That was too. That was that was way more long winded than it needed to be. But okay, uh, but I've yeah, never I, told I that story. You're... Yeah, and uh, I'm justif- sure your girlfriend was also delighted. I was going to say justifiably uh, didn't have a great time. No, no, certainly not. Hmm. That's the reason. That's the only reason I have a smartphone is I have gotten turned around so many goddamn times based on like you know directions and nonsense that I got in advance. Yeah, and then suddenly like oh there's construction or oh the satellite feed drops because I'm on a fucking mountain and then I can't find where the hell I'm supposed to go. That is one of the reasons why I do like living in Phoenix because all you have to do is know how to get to the major cross streets. And just uh, follow and once you it. do that, yeah, it's it's yeah. pretty straightforward. Mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah. All right, the next one, Wilderness Survival Guide by Gemini Home Entertainment. Are you my friend? Is this what you think is behind me all the time? Yeah, that's what I know is behind you. Sometimes, man. Hey, it's kind of good that Courtney, uh, uh, you know, had things going on today because I don't think she would have liked this. No, she oh. not at all. Well, then I'm 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 really glad then that she uh would have been paying attention less comfy. to our blossoming friendship over the years that we were getting her into horror movies. <laughs> <laughs> the horror. Okay, the next one. And this one is that was the longest one. The I, other I'm ones are... so upset that you're pronouncing that event tide. Okay. Next one. Next time you think about it, don't. (laughs) Don't. Did you see a sign on the front of my house that said Botanical (laughs) Foundation of Massachusetts Storage? No. Yes. You know why you didn't see that sign? I know my botanical garden is good. Thanks for the coffee. That was gourmet shit. Because I do not live in a greenhouse. Okay, we can say it. <laughs> but that uh, one time, if it, that vagina if protein, had testicles. If your protein production looks like that, you should go see a doctor. Let's be real, guys. We've all drank cum. <laughs> <laughs> Not out of a big gulp, though. That was my least s- favorite so far. I snorted, uh, okay. But one, this was the one that I said for me. had this was the one that I said had a lot of Lovecraftian influences in. Okay. Um yeah. So the last one is more of a modern not modern. I don't know why I'm making it sound like this was an old genre. It's like at most six years old. Uh this is the current Renaissance. This is actually one of the ones and you can even tell if you looked at the previous view counts, there's probably only a couple hundred thousand. This one is in the millions. Uh, the first one you showed uh, had uh, uh, two million views. That's true. That's because um, that one is the like progenitor. Uh, so every, when people look up analog horror, they're going to be It's the first taken... one that comes up. Yeah, exactly. So, um... 
Scrum. Okay. Now that we've seen all four of them, do you guys have a better idea of the genre known as analog horror? Yes, and actually really like it mm. for the most part. I mean, again, the, the fishy... Fishy one did nothing for me, or the fishy, uh, not fishy, but you know the Evan tied the uh, the botanical garden. <laughs> but okay, that's but fair. Botanical, the botanical garden. The botanical garden. Yes, yes. Um, I they seem relaxing for the most part. I mean, creepy, but I could see myself watching them just to unwind. Relaxing. Yeah. <laughs> Just gonna chill at home, watch you know body distensions that tell me to kill myself. Yeah, that's fine. I, I there's something wrong with my programming. Just <laughs> something about the vintage, like the yeah, vintage no, I feel see what you mean, is, is nice. It's why mm-hmm. I like lo-fi. Like it reminds it, lo-fi horror is what it is. So it's, right, um, yeah, it's supposed to be like a slow burn where like you're supposed I, to be watching. That's what yeah, I fuck yeah. with the most. I love slow burns. Shane and I just watched the three-hour Batman movie yesterday, and I immediately could have watched it right at the moment that it ended. <laughs> For I, the same I, reason. You wouldn't have had to twist my arm either. Yeah. Right? I, I think the static, like the white noise, also probably helps, because that's oh, something that is a static, common yeah. use for most folks. That is true. I that is actually an interesting thing to think about because like that's not that's only a fairly recent use of white noise. I mean, because even thinking about there was a whole horror um movie based off of white noise. Yes, and it was ghastly. Yeah, yeah but, we don't talk uh, about it. Uh, that, uh, I think Costner's I watched it as a kid. I don't remember anything it's about not, it. Yeah, though. it's not one of Michael Keaton's best. Oh, C- Keaton. There we go. You oh, he was in Keaton. that? I had no idea. He's the main character, friend. Oh, uh, like I said, I I watched it a long, long ass time ago, so I don't remember a lot of parts about it. But Okay. Well, I'll let you have it. Thank you. Not to on say the, I'll actually watch it, but... I was going to say, on the growing list of films that John has waiting for you, sitting on top of his refrigerator the next time you, you see him. You also have a beanie that Melissa was kind enough to make for you. Spoilers! It's way past Christmas. There's no such thing. It doesn't matter. Oh, that's what she wanted to give me. Oh, oh, mm-hmm. oh. Well, that's very sweet. Yeah. And they're they're amazing, so. Yes, they are. Both of them. I'm saying that knowing that he can hear me because he's literally in this call. But both, both he was Melissa referring to the beanies, she, not oh, not yeah. not Melissa. Oh. But Melissa is also amazing. Yeah, oh just, yeah, no, I was saying just, Melissa and you are both amazing. People. Well, bless you for saying so. But I don't yes, give yes. gifts; I just take them. That's fair. That's, you get the gift of my tolerance. The gift of my presence in my I am ass. Here, what more do you want? <laughs> In my ass. Shane's like, I'm here. What more do you want? John's like, drop trowel, like ass out. Like, I'm no, here. He said my axe. Oh, <laughs> you made a Lord of the Rings ass. reference. You I did. I know he did, but I thought he said my ass, not my, my axe. My holes. You can eat my dick. And you shall and have my, my holes. Ass. One does not simply pull down my trouser pants. So I'm going to end this topic by giving five by given giving, by shooting it in the head, <laughs> please. Um, myself first. Um, <laughs> by giving five analog horror series recommendations. Okay. Um, Magnus first, Archives. <laughs> would you actually? That's a good question. Would you consider the Magnus Archives to be analog horror? They consider it to be analog horror. Oh, I did not know that. See, that is a whole because facet it's all of recorded the... on audio tape. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. That uh, honestly, that was a facet that I did not really consider in the process of researching this. Hmm. So that's fair. There probably is a whole separate part of the genre that I haven't even considered because it's still as long as it's utilizing an analog medium, as mm-hmm. in like. A lot of the information is allegedly taken from analog sources, then it would fall under that purview. And spoilers, but not spoilers. Um, the fact that it is on audio tape is actually very vital to the storytelling aspects, and you get that in multiple ways. So it's not taking anything away from the story, but there's a reason that it's all on audio tape. So just bear that in mind. Okay. See, there you go. Um, so. I, I would recommend that. Um, well, Shane recommends it because he has heard it. 
um, unlike myself. Um, let's see. The I I recommend the first uh the mainstay of the genre, Local 58 TV. Okay. Um, it was the first analog horror series to really popularize the genre. It wasn't the first, but it was the one that catapulted it um to I almost said success, but popularity. Um, and is considered a primary influence of most um successor analog horror genre uh, channels. Um, my absolute recommendation is Gemini Home Entertainment, which you guys did see the uh, Wilderness Survival Guide. That was my second um, favorite. Okay. Actually, uh, it's no, that was my favorite. That was your favorite? Okay. I'm, pro- I'm processing in real time right now. <laughs> that's that's I, fair. I liked the that's first fair. one probably the best for me. Okay. Well, first. you're that into was, like the Marfa That was Local 58. Yeah. yeah. So... So both of those are very good channels. They are more of the original ideas. They they are they defined really what analog horror is on the YouTube platform. Um, Gemini Home Entertainment is still producing episodes on a fairly consistent basis. I believe their most recent one actually came out uh, a week ago as of this recording, um, and is really fascinating. It actually shows where nature's mockery, which we did see in the Wilderness Survival Guide where that comes and how it how it appears. Oh and no. It, it involves a lot of bo- body horror. That would be terrifying. <laughs> yes. Um, let's see here. Uh and its plot is actually finally after a couple of years of it being out is finally starting to coalesce into an overarching uh narrative. Yeah. Uh, which is actually really awesome because in a lot of these videos I used to think that they were all a- anthology as in they didn't really connect. Yeah. But you uh I am we are starting to see as more things come out, um, the connections between a lot of them. And I imagine Which is say prob- another staple of Magnus, right? I imagine yeah. there's probably user made playlists as well of like preferred order or, you know, just mm. Oh yeah, yeah. There's a Cause, whole separate Because are like, they so so it's not a, not an anthology, or at least for what you gather now. Is there yes. a specific viewing order or is it kind of just like just knowing like with Shane in the Magnus archives where it's like things just start to kind of make sense the more that you watch them and they're in an established universe, but not necessarily in a sequential order. I feel like there's ones where there, there are more, their threads are closer or more similar to each other that you can watch back to back as opposed to watching them in the way that they came out. Gotcha. That's Um, what I meant. Yeah. 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 There's a whole uh, like separate section of YouTube that pretty much covers horror YouTube channels interesting um, two of them that i recommend uh i know i keep saying horror wrong but i'm i'm <laughs> trying to not dig into it but also we've still all be seen okay those with... channels friend i know yes um mm. the two that i watch personally are nightmind and nexpo um they cover a lot more not just analog horror but just um a lot of the other various scary youtube channels or alternate reality games uh kind of like marble hornets in fact i believe both channels have covered marble hornets which if you recall was um the uh, the first kind of found footage thing for slender man mm-hmm. which really like kind of established the Slenderman mythos well it's kind of uh, to hearken somewhat to what john was saying but also disabuse the notion is it's kind of akin to how you described mother horse eyes which is there's a lot of things that feel very disparate initially, but because of the way that they tell the narrative and the way they present the story to you, eventually it does start to kind of coalesce into making sense, and you see the interconnectivity eventually, and Magnus does that where it feels like everything is very disparate, and then just yeah. because you're continuing the story, they start to bring everything together, like tying shoelaces. Yeah, so to actually give an answer... Personally, I would say watch them in chronological order as how they were released. Released, yeah. Just to have fun. But there are channels that are a lot more well-versed in these uh, genre, in this genre, that would probably be able to give a better introduction into the channel itself and be able to explain the nuance in a way if you really want to do a deep dive. Um, I actually, Nexpo actually came out with my voice is cracking, came out with a, I think it was a two and a half hour long video that explains everything that goes on in this series. And I think it actually is longer than the series itself for Gemini Home Entertainment. Okay. Um, Hmm. But uh, personally, you could just watch it chronologically. There is also 
a video game that I think the creator of Gemini Home Entertainment released called Lethal Omen that actually does a lot of foreshadowing for episodes that are coming out now. Uh, so it's actually really cool in that uh, playing through the game and there were multiple different endings that you could do. And those different endings would were actually foreshadowing for videos and episodes that we are getting now. Um, and so that's really cool where you can actually see things starting to pay off. And I guess that is why I really recommend it because a lot of the work that was put into it uh, at the beginning is now really starting to pay off and you're starting to see all the threads starting to connect. And it's mm -hmm. really great. Very gratifying. Um, yes. Uh, the next, I'd recommend the Walton Files, which I didn't show any videos of, nor did I really mention it in this episode. Um, but I, I recommend it in part because it is so different from other analog horror uh, series, um, but also because it is actually straightforward in its lore, unlike its influence, which is Five Nights at Freddy's. I don't know if you guys know about that yeah, series vaguely, or that video game. Yeah, yeah like yes. passing. Yeah. yeah, so to summarize, I'm not going to summarize lore, but the lore is very, very, very convoluted, involving um, game theorists, uh, YouTube channels, like tens upon tens of videos trying to figure out what the hell is going on. The Walton files are very nice in that they feature animatronics that are haunted by ghosts of dead children whose bodies were stuffed into these animatronics. Um, but the plot itself is very straightforward and you can understand it by just watching it. You don't have to play through. There's no games that you have to play through and try and analyze this one picture of a newspaper file or clipping or something like that, or go onto a website or anything crazy like uh, five nights at Freddy's. I like it because it is also um, animated and it's actually very decent animations where um, there's a lot of, there's still a lot of body horror that occurs in it, but everything is not cartoonish to kind of belittle it, but everything is very, it, it's animated. I don't want to go into more detail okay. than that because I'm going to lose my train of uh, thought. Okay. It's a very good animated series. I recommend it because you can follow along with it, and it's not super convoluted. All right. Um, I actually just, uh, for my fourth recommendation, I just started watching this series this morning in the process of finishing up this episode, uh, and I am completely sold on it. There's only, I think, four episodes that have come out, and it actually started, I think, two months ago. Um, and it's called, I'm going to butcher it, but Sol Somnium Dream Viewer. Uh, which is primarily focusing on a company um, called the Somnium Dream Viewer uh, that sells a device, the Dream Viewer, uh, that allows you to record your dreams. And a lot of interesting things come from that. Um, Chuck Klosterman was there long before this. <laughs> oh, yeah. I would say that a lot of science, a lot of these channels are influenced by science fiction uh, and Chuck Klosterman and bad journalists. Yes. yes. Um, finally, the last one I recommend is uh, it's a series called The Back Rooms by a YouTuber named Kane Pixels. Um, the it's Back Rooms Kane. is a popular creepypasta, if you guys know what the Back Rooms are. Um, they have a casting couch. Yes. Um, Spared no expense. Yes. In this economy. Uh, so it's a similar creepypasta to something like Slenderman. Uh, and the creator is a fantastic animator, making the creepypasta as lifelike as possible for CGI. Uh, to be honest, I thought it was live action until I read the comments complimenting the uh, creator on his use of CGI. Because it is so realistic, it looks like he found a location that looks like the back rooms and filmed in it. So very quickly, the back rooms are um the idea is and it's a very kind of jokesy uh some summation of it but it's the idea that you no clip as in you clip through a wall or something like that like in a video oh, yeah, game yeah, yeah. and then you end up in the back rooms which are kind of like a separate pocket dimension which looks like um uh, uh, to it looks like an office space that's just completely void of everything except for old halogen lights that give that like distinct low wine uh and it's all it looks like 70s office style with the halogen lights and the buzzing and that's it there's there's more things to that and i might do a little bit more research and i actually might do an episode on it if i feel that there is enough um 
stuff to present as an episode. Okay. So, but those are my recommendations. So analog, uh, I'm sorry, local 58 TV, mm-hmm. Gemini Home Entertainment, The Walton Files, uh, Somnium Dream Viewer, and uh, technically the YouTuber is Kane Pixels. That's their channel name. But uh, The Back Rooms, uh, very, very good. Um, I, I also feel like they're a very good uh, encapsulation or summation of the analog horror genre. Okay. Right yeah. And so that is my episode. What were the fucking lies? Uh, so it's actually quite funny because both lies we had a discussion about each time I got mm. to it. Uh, so the first one, the Blair Witch Project, I said that it was the first of its kind, that it was the first found footage film. It is not. Fuck you. Um, while some, while people say it is the first of its genre, there is actually a found footage movie from 1989 called the uh, McPherson Tape, otherwise known as UFO Abduction by Dean Eliotto. Well, who the fuck wants to watch it? Yeah. Um, yeah. It depicts a real alien abduction of a Connecticut family named the McPherson Fersons or Fiersons as they celebrate their relative's fifth birthday in 1983. It was actually passed around the UFO community for years because many people believed erroneously that it was real found footage. Well, then ah. they should just watch the Poughkeepsie tapes instead. Yes. I actually had a conversation with my, uh, with, with Destiny about that, about the Poughkeepsie because okay. I always pronounced oh. it incredibly wrong. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, and so seeing but it spelled what? out, and she was like, but "Oh, you're it's, usually it's so Pepsi on tapes. top of pronunciations." <sighs> I'm a gog as well. The second lie, because I I don't even want to address that right now. Um, I mentioned that a trope, a common trope, was jump scares, and how they feature very predominantly in analog horror, and that it was only visual, no uh, audio jump scares. That it's was the a lie. Inverse. Yeah. It's pretty much the inverse. Yes, okay. there's a lot of, uh, and you guys even heard it yourselves. Hey. Especially, yeah, the the screaming in the Wilderness Survival Guide. Um, there would be uh, in a lot of the emergency broadcast system um, episodes. You have that piercing siren that also appears. Um, there's not a lot of jump scares. If they are, they're very subtle, and they don't go like jumping out at the screen to try and get your attention. Um, like a good description of the jump scare would actually be at the end of the think principle, the last video that we saw where it showed a dark room and then the light turned on and you saw the shadowy figure with the eyes. <laughs> the that really is the poorly drawn. Yeah. Yes. That is the closest thing to a jump scare that I say that commonly happens in analog horror where there is something that is off putting, but it's not directly jumping out to try and scare you. It's more like that anticipation leading up. And then it's something to that effect. Okay. So, yeah. Interesting. Mm-hmm. It is uh to me very reminiscent of the things that I loved about the first half of Sinister. Yeah. And then you get very upset when the supernatural elements really start to whip in, but like just you those, mean when those Jim first Rude few shows up. Yeah. When once you get like the the few frozen things where like you see an image or something reflected in the video, I'm like that is exceedingly eerie and very unnerving to watch and the second that it turns to the camera you're like i okay fuck i quit like just make it a little more real and i'm I'm happy to invest because that would the concept of that film in general was terrifying right before they well, start throwing the supernatural elements in i am gonna say again and again and especially now michael that you need to watch house of the devil by Ty West. I'll add that to the long list that I got. I would say Ty- that House of the Devil would probably be, uh, you should put that higher on the list based on your personal interests. And I'll remind okay. everybody that that is Ty West, Desperado, Rough Rider. Why don't no, you, you don't come want to your none senses. of this six yeah. gunniness? <laughs> the Ty, 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 Ty West. West. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Michael, your new method is working, I think. I like this approach because it it gets more conversation, and I feel like you guys have a better understanding as opposed to me just talking at you no, for I an hour. I mean, when you get confident, you start sounding like walking a little bit, but other than that, it's good. 
Oh. Yeah, that was a little bit weird. I'm going to be listening and editing that through and just thinking to myself, what the hell happened? Did I have like a stroke? Like an actual wah, legitimate wah, stroke instead of the wah. like, <laughs> like, fuck. <laughs> so he took and wore this uncomfortable bit of, uh, you know, anthropomorphic horror up his ass. <laughs> then he died yeah, of dysentery. Sneeze. Give me to watch. Got the deep brute sneeze, and now I'm giving it to you. Sounds like a really bad five piece jazz band. <laughs> deep brute sneeze. <laughs> the man with the hex. There's nothing between me, the devil, and the deep brute sneeze. <laughs> uh, the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was the deep root sneeze. <laughs> Well, uh, stellarly done, and I'm, you know, I'm glad we didn't get the the lies. Well, I think I I think the destination was the journey that we took along the way. Carry mm. on, <laughs> wayward son. That's Kansas. I feel like we're all the same people at the other end of this, and that we didn't learn anything, and that's kind of the point. Indeed. Well, you I are sure also so. just a small town girl. I'm really lonely. Living. And Tony Soprano's about to die, so everybody duck. <laughs> I watch Sopranos on TV. Indeed. I make it the poo-poo. I make it the pee. <laughs> uh, and you crop-dusted Whole Foods. Whole Foods, baby! <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, ladies, germaphobes, gremlins, and otherwise, we appreciate you all being here for an exceedingly censored edition <laughs> of the Disinformed Podcast, and we're going to be better. We're going to strive to improve our quality content, lest Dewan batter us. There's a note here from legal that says we have to stop naming people. Well, unfortunately, you know, he's an executive producer. He did this to himself. <laughs> oh, that's right. We are paying him. <laughs> no, he's paying <laughs> us. <laughs> well, that's what executive producer means. Who pays who? Who watches the Watchmen? Indeed. The, the, the horrors. <laughs> uh, well, uh, we sincerely appreciate you all being here to listen. As always, uh, you can continue to keep track of us if you just like and subscribe and give us a little rate and review because we would love to hear from you. And you've got more wonderful content winging your way every marvelous Monday morning with new podcast episodes. Of course, we occasionally have stuff on Wednesdays over on YouTube. And of course, the link tree down below in the show notes will connect you with all of our relevant socials. So go check those out whenever you would like. And they are all exceedingly delightful as they die. But I think that is going to officially wrap this like a body going into the ground. So, for the Disinformed Podcast this week, I'm Shane. I'm John. And I'm Michael. And our love and uh, best wishes out to and Courtney. And my name is Courtney. I can't be with you in person, but I'm floating in the ether, and this is what my spirit sounds like. Why Why did you make Courtney <laughs> Mr. Hanky? I thought it was closer to Michael Jackson than Mr. Hanky, but I guess you got to Okay, work we'll split the, the difference voices. and say Towley. <laughs> I accept that. Are you going to staple your hands together? I'm going to go make Jonas dinner. <laughs> Hamburgers! <laughs> okay. <laughs> and zippity zoop, we're out of here. Go commit, die. <laughs>